Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph linear inequalities of, line, of vertical and horizontal uh, lines, or in horizontal inequalities. So basically, you can see here, I don't have your standard like standard form or slope intercept form. I basically just have x and x and y and less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, to a number. So how do you graph those? It's one of the more common common problems that I have with um, have a lot of students have. So the best thing to kind of look at this is to forget about the inequality for a second and just think about it as an equation. y equals negative 1. Now, when you first learn a graph, the first thing we started doing was plotting points in a table. Um, and we created you know, values for x and we created values for y. So right here I have a table. And I'm going to use this to kind of demonstrate how to graph y is equal to negative 1. So in this equation, y equals negative 1, we don't have anything for x. The only thing we know is y is equal to negative 1. So if I was going to create a table of values, I'm going to create negative 1. I'm going to write negative 1 is always equal for, to y, or y is always equal to negative 1. As far as for the values of x, it doesn't really matter what the value of x is. I can plug in any number I want to. It, y is always equal to negative 1. Now, what does y equal to negative 1 represent on the graph? Well, when x equals 0, y equals negative 1 is down here. When now y equals 3, y equals negative 1 is over here. When, y, when x equals negative 1, y equals negative 1 is here. So no matter what value I choose for x, y is always going to be a dot on negative 1. And if you connect those dots to create a line, what you're going to do is you're going to create your, you're going to create your graph. So um, I'll just graph this, because basically what I'm trying to show you is it doesn't matter negative 1, negative 2, 0, 5, you know. 1,000. It doesn't matter. y is always equal to negative 1. No matter what you plug in, y is equal to negative 1. Now, that is the equation. But remember, we're not graphing the equation. We're graphing the inequality. So we have to look at this and say y is less than negative 1. Now, there's a couple of different ways to do this. For the first example, I'm going to show you just how to use the test point. So basically, when we're doing this, basically what we want to do is we want to find values that, um, oh, I'm sorry. We want to be able to determine if this is less than or uh, um, if our boundary line is a part of our equation or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a value. Uh, I'm going to plug in a point on this graph that is going to um, a point on this graph y. A point I'm going to choose the value for y that's on this graph. So for instance, let's look at this point. This point is 0, negative 1, where y, so 0, comma, negative 1. So the y value is negative 1. So I just write out test, and I write negative 1 is less than negative 1. Is negative 1 less than negative 1? No, that is false. So therefore, the boundary line is not a part of my graph. So therefore, I am going to shade it. It's still the boundary line, but it's going to be shaded uh, or dashed. Now we want to determine, all right, inequality says you know, y is less than negative 1. We want all the values of y that are going to be less than negative 1. The best thing to do is to use another test point to determine if that, which points are going to be true or false. Because if points above the line are true, that means all the points are true above the line. If points above the line are false, that means all the points above the line are false. So the best test point to choose is 0, 0. As long as your line boundary line does not go through 0, 0. If it does, you're going to have to pick another point that it does not go through. So again, now I'm going to plug in 0, 0 into my equation. Well, I only have the y coordinate I can plug it in. So 0 is less than negative 1. Is 0 less than negative 1? No. That's, again, false. So since all the points up here are false, that means all the points down here are going to be true. And I'm going to use vertical lines to kind of represent my shading. Okay. Um, all right, so now let's kind of get into uh, another one here. And hopefully you kind of see that if I was to replace all of these numbers with 3, then the graph would be exactly the same. So basically, when you're graphing, um, when y is less than or y is greater than or whatever, um, you just go to the value of, you go to the y coordinate on the y axis and you create a horizontal line. Now, you could use test points um, again. Actually, yeah, let's just go through. I'll do a test point again. So I'm going to graph y equals 3 here. The other, the other problem is I won't use test points. And again, we're going to want to test. So let's test a point that's on the line. Let's test 0, comma 3. So again, I only have the y coordinate to plug in. So I do 3 is greater than or equal to 3. Is 3 greater than or equal to 3? Yes, that is true. OK? 
So since that's true, um, since that is true, I'm going to have a solid line, meaning my boundary line is a part of my inequality. Then I always like using 0, 0. It's just the easiest to use. So then I'll test my 0, 0 to determine where to shade. So 0 is greater than or equal to 3. Is 0 greater than or equal to 3? No, that's false. So therefore, 0, 0 is low, below the graph, so that's false. That means all the points above it are going to be true. Okay. Now, testing is very important, especially if you're unsure, if you want to check your work, I recommend testing. However, it does take a little bit of extra time. So I'm going to kind of go through these next ones um, a little bit quicker, just because I've gone through these problems and this is the point where I kind of want you to get to. Now, to understand x, though, we got to go back and looking at the table. So in the first example, I said, what y equals? Well, then that's going to create all the values for y. Now, if I was going to graph this, again, think of this as x is equal to 5. I don't know what the values of y are for this equation, but I do know that x is always equal to 5. So I go where x is equal to 5. When y equals 0, x equals 5 right here. Well, what about when y equals 4? Well, x equals 5 right there. What about when y equals negative 2? x equals 5 there. So again, to connect all of these points, I would create a, a line. And again, it doesn't matter what the values of y are. 0, negative 5. Um, 3, 10. It doesn't matter. You're going to create infinite many points. Now, you could always test to determine if it's dashed or if it's solid. But the best thing I like to do is look at the inequality symbol. If the inequality symbol is less than or greater than, your, your boundary line is not a part of your solution. So I'm not going to draw a solid line because my, it's a greater than symbol. So I'm going to graph a dashed line. Okay. Um, then the next thing, ooh, negative 2. Forgot one last thing. Um, then we now need to pick values that are going to be um, greater than 5. Well, think about x values that are greater than 5. That's obviously going to be 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you can even just use your thinking and say, all right, all values to the right are going to be greater than that. Another way people like to look at this is see where the arrow is pointing. When the arrow is pointing for vertical lines to the right, that means all the solutions are going to be going to the right. Now, it's very important, though, to only use that for vertical lines or even equations. Like if it's less than, that means it's below. If it's greater than, it's going to the right. But that only works when the variable is on the left side. You can always go back and do a test point um, and say test and put in 0, which is false. So since it's false on the left, it's true on the right. Now, I wanted to show that example, and I wanted to flip this around because the common mistake the students will say is, oh, inequality goes right. That means I shade to the right. Yeah, that works when the variable's on the left-hand side. Here, the variable's not on the left-hand side. So do not shade over to the right. You don't know yet. What you need to do is rewrite this so the variable is on the left-hand side. So it looks like this, what I originally had written down. OK, so now this is a less than or equal to. It's like this one. It's going to be a solid line. Again, x is less than or equal to. So you're going to create a vertical line. So I go over x equals negative 2. Did I create a, OK. And you create a nice solid line. OK? Then again, ladies and gentlemen, the best thing to do is you can see that, oh, it's pointing to the left. Variables on the left. These points are true. Or you could always just choose your test point and test 0, 0. So you plug 0 in for x, less than or equal to negative 2. Is 0 less than or equal to negative 2? That's false. So since 0, 0 is false to the right of it, that means all the points to the left are going to be true. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph vertical and, vertical and horizontal linear inequalities. Thanks. Hello.